Hello again. This macro lecture is on universal gravitation. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and your follow-up questions on Google Forms. Okay, so before we get started with kind of the nuts and bolts of this, let's review a little bit first. We've talked before this idea that all physical objects with mass um, are sources of gravity, and this causes them to attract each other. Um, meaning it doesn't just take this thing the size of a planet, you can actually look at the force of gravity between two soccer balls or between um, even an ant and something else uh, if you have sensitive enough equipment. And they've actually done experiments to see this. And this attraction, like I said, is called gravity, and it's described by Newton's law of universal gravitation, the idea that any physical object with mass is a um, source of gravity in this sense. Now, like I mentioned before, it also takes tons and tons and tons of mass before we notice this pull. And the reason why is because gravity is not a very strong force. Uh, so the result is it takes something like the size of a moon or Earth before we as people can really notice the pull of gravity. Um, now, that doesn't mean it doesn't exist, it's just not noticeable or not very large for things, let's say, the size of you or me or something much smaller. But there's an equation that can actually describe the relationship uh, between gravity and how much mass things have. So the gravitational force of attraction, so force of gravity, um, between any two objects is determined by the mass of both of the objects. So in this case, you take g, which is our gravitational constant. It's kind of like pi or some other constant, just a number that makes the equation work. You multiply the two masses, and you divide by the separation or the distance between those masses, um, but that distance needs to be squared. Sometimes you'll see r there, sometimes you'll see d there, same thing. Um, but again, it's this number g, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th, times the mass times the other mass, and then divide by the distance or separation squared. And the force will come out in newtons, and the mass needs to be measured in kilograms. And this is Newton's law of universal gravitation. And basically, when you get things like the size of Earth here as one of the masses, that offsets this really, really, really tiny number and enables the force to be observable, even at larger distances. So let's look at what is the relationship um, described by this equation. So between force and mass, the relationship is linear. What that means is, is if we have two masses and there's a force between them because of their mass, so gravitational force, and their separation distance of d, then if we double one of those masses, the force becomes twice as big as well. If we triple one of those masses, the force becomes three times as big. Now if you doubled both masses, that would be like times two for one mass and times two for the other, so it would actually be four times as big. So this relationship between force and mass is linear when you're only talking about a single mass. Um, it compounds if you use both masses in this sense. And we can see that by this equation right here. So F and G, um, it's a linear relationship, there's no square, it's not in the denominator or anything along those lines. Or sorry, um, not F and G, F and mass M. Now between force and distance, it's actually an inverse squared relationship. So what that means is if we have two masses and they're separated by a certain distance, if we double that distance, the force is actually cut to one-fourth of the original value. If we instead half the original distance, so from here to there, then the force becomes four times as big. Uh, and that's because of, again, this squared term in the denominator. So because it's in the denominator, decreasing this number actually increases the force. And because it's squared, it's not a um, proportional or a regular uh, kind of linear relationship in that sense. It's a square. That's it for this one. Three or more bullet points worth of notes. One to two sentence summary, and please do your follow-up questions on Google Forms.